Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Harling again. I hope you were able to see my Go Math video for lesson 10.2. Before I do that, I am gonna go over the math homework that I asked you to do for lesson 10.1. So if you look on my calendar that I'm making as we go along, today is Thursday, uh, April 30th. This is day four. I wanna do the homework pages because you'll notice I've been asking you to do that. So I want to make sure that I go over it today. Then I'm going to go over lesson 10.2 and I already showed you the video. So first I'm going to start with the homework that I asked you to do, which is still lesson 10.1. All right, so let's go over this. Time to the minute. That was our previous learning target. How could we tell time to the nearest minute? Again, this is 10.1. This is page 565 chapter 10. So if you need to go back in your packet for a minute and find it, you can pause the video and then you can find it and then uh, click the video back on and you can follow with me. So it says write the time and write one way you can read the time. This is what we were doing. Here's the first example. They gave you the answer. This clock shows 116. We could also write it as 16 minutes after one. Number two, it's showing the clock as 1020. And another way you could write that is 20 minutes after 10. Okay, again, Ms. Harling is doing the homework that I asked you to do for the last couple days. I said that you could work on it and I would eventually go over it. So I'm still in 10.1 because I'm going over the homework first. This is the homework page. All right, here's a digital clock. It's showing you what time, 413. So we're just gonna write that again. And another way to say that would be 13. minutes after four. Okay, take a few minutes and write these down. I'll zoom out a little bit. I think I was going a little fast yesterday, but again, you can pause the video if you think I'm going too fast. But so for number two, you should have written the time in digital 1020 and then written it in words 20 minutes after 10. Number three, you could have written 413 as the digital time, 13 minutes after four. Again, our learning target was how we should be able to tell time to the nearest minute. Or I can tell time to the nearest minute. All right, I'm going to number four. Here's the clock. Again, this homework page, you should have written for this clock, 12.05. Oops. And another way to write this would be five minutes after 12. I keep writing my letters so close together because I'm holding this camera and writing. Okay, so it should be five minutes after 12 and the digital time is 12.05. Number five, 724. Again, we write it. And then it's 24 minutes after seven. Okay, so that's four and five. 12.05, five minutes after 12, 7.24, 24 minutes after seven. Number six, 2.51. Now here's the first one. Well, well, not the first one, but here's one that's showing the clock to the exact minute. I haven't really talked about that since yesterday, but we were telling time to the exact minute. If we count zero, five, 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and this tick goes to 51 if we're counting to the exact minute. So our answer should be 251. Again, notice that the shorthand is close to the three because it's almost the three o'clock hour, but not quite. Nine minutes, it will be three o'clock. So we're gonna write this a different way. We're gonna write nine minutes. before three. Okay, makes sense. Alrighty, now let's go down here to number seven. It says write the time another way. It says 23 minutes after four. Well, four is the hour hand, so we're gonna say four, 23. We're gonna put the minutes second. The hour comes first after the colon. Then for number eight, this one is hard because you don't have a clock in front of you. It says 18 minutes before 11. I'm just gonna give you the answer again. I will do some quick little uh, questions like this on another day because I'm waiting for a clock that I ordered. So as soon as I get that clock, I'm gonna do a couple of these with you. But this is 1042. If you figured it out, great job. So in 18 minutes, it will be 11 o'clock, all right? Now, number nine, here's a problem-solving question from the real world. What time is it when the hour hand is a little past the three and the minute hand is pointing to the three? So they basically want you to visualize that, or you could have drawn a clock on the paper to help you solve that. Again, the hour hand is a little past the three and the minute hand is pointing to the three. If you said 315, you are correct. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you a clock. And they said that the hour hand is a little past the three. So the hour hand is the short hand. So I'm gonna go like that. And the minute hand they're telling us is directly pointing to the three. So that is what 315 would look like. Okay? Number 10, Pete began practicing at 25 minutes before, keyword, before eight. What is another way to write this time? Well, if I wanted to write it another way, I would say 735. Again, you really need to look at a clock so that you can figure this out. Um, I will do some problems like that later, but I just wanna move on. Then I always do this one with you before I assign homework. I always do the writing part with you, and I didn't do that the other day, but I'm gonna do it now. It says, draw a clock showing a time to the nearest minute Write the time as many different ways as you can. So it says you wanna draw a clock uh, showing a time to the nearest minute. So Ms. Harley's gonna draw another clock here. Fill in my hour numbers. And I'm gonna make a time for you guys. So I will do the five o'clock hour, even though it's pointing between the five and the six, it's still five o'clock. But my long hand will go here. So if I look at ticks, this would be, let me just zoom in. One, two, three. And let's just pretend, I know there's usually four ticks in between, but this would be counting by fives. Uh, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Third, this is number seven. 35, 36, 37. So what time is it? It's 537. So I'm gonna write that over here. And another way I could say that is 37 minutes after five. And there's a couple other ways I could write it too, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. So you can pause the video if you need to, to see how I did that. But I'm gonna move on because this was two pages of homework and I still wanna do a little bit of 10.2. All right, here's the lesson check. These are things we've already learned. It says, what is another way to write 13 minutes before 10? Whew. Another way to write 13 minutes before 10 is to say that it's 9.47. I'm just gonna go through this real quick. 
Um, it says, what time does the clock show? If we look carefully, we know the shorthand is um, basically touching the two. So it's still the two o'clock hour. And if we count by five, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, it is two, 20. Oh, I don't know why I keep making so many dots. Okay, and then for number three, it says each bird has two wings. How many wings do five birds have? Well, key word is each, and we've talked a lot about word problems, so we know we have to multiply. Five times two equals 10. All right, so there's 10 wings. Number four, what is the unknown factor? Seven, because eight times seven is 56. Number five, Mr. Wren has 56 paintbrushes. He places eight paintbrushes on each of the tables in the art room. How many tables are in the art room? Now they started with the largest number. They want you to take that number and split it, okay? So if we're doing that, we are dividing 58, or excuse me, 56 divided by eight equals what, everybody? Seven, isn't that familiar? to number four, it's multiplication backwards. That's basically what this is. Seven times eight is 56. Number six, what number completes the equations? Four times a triangle equals 20, and 20 divided by four also equals that same triangle, that same number. So what number can be used in both equations? Five, because four times five is 20, and 20 divided by four is five. Yay, that's done. So guess what? I'm going to the first lesson of 10.2 because I showed you a video about that this morning. And our learning target is, how can you tell when to use AM and PM with time? So that's our learning target. I can tell when to use AM, and p.m. with time and I showed you the video and you'll notice a lot of things that are on this sheet are the same things that you saw on the video so this is lesson 10.2 and this is page 567 so try to find that if you need to pause the video go ahead and do that but I am going to begin lesson 10.2 and I'm only gonna do the first page and then tomorrow I'll do the second page and the third page. All right, unlock the problem. Same thing that was in the video. Laura's family is going hiking tomorrow at seven o'clock. How should Lauren write the time to show that they are going in the morning, not in the evening? All right, so let's look at the bullets. Circle the helpful information that tells you about the hiking time. What's important in this problem is that what time are they going? Tomorrow at seven. What else is important? That they're going in the morning. So those two words should be circled to help us unlock this problem. Then it goes on to say, what do you need to find? The time. during the day Lauren is hiking I just wanted to make that sentence a little bit shorter because what I basically mean is what time should Lauren write the time for seven o'clock all right we know she's going hiking in the morning. So we have to know again from our learning target if she's going to use a.m. or p.m. So we need to know the time during the day Lauren is hiking. Is it morning or is it afternoon? All right, here is that number line that they showed in the video. It says you can use a number line to show the sequence or order of events. It can help you understand the number of hours in a day. It says think the distance from one mark to the next mark represents an hour. So they're saying from this little mark to the next little mark is an hour. So they only showed you 12 o'clock midnight 
then they went to 12 o'clock noon, then they went to 12 o'clock midnight again. So this number line represents a whole hour. And if you remember in the video, I think AM was green and PM was purple. They didn't do that on the sheet, but you know where they are. AM is the first part of the day, obviously, from 12 o'clock midnight to noon. And then the afternoon into the evening starts at noon and goes to midnight. So it says, tell the time after midnight. All right, we know this is 6 o'clock a.m. This is the time Ms. Harlan gets up because it's 12 midnight and then it's 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock a.m. That's the morning. All right, so now we're going to tell the time after midnight. It says um, midnight is 12 at night. The times after midnight and before noon are written as a.m. Let me say that again. The times after midnight and before noon are written as a.m. So seven in the morning is written as seven a.m. Make sense? Yes, it does. So now it says after midnight and before noon, this is what a.m. represents. Once the new day has begun, it is midnight and it continues until 12 noon. So Lauren should write the hiking time as 7, and we already said it, a.m. Now it says, find the mark that shows 7 a.m. on the number line above and circle the mark. So we didn't do that. If we know on this number line that this represents 6 a.m., we have to count every hour. One, or excuse me, let me say that's 1 o'clock a.m., 2 o'clock a.m., 3 o'clock a.m., 4 o'clock a.m., 5 o'clock a.m., 6 o'clock a.m. So this must be 7 o'clock a.m. And I'm just going to put that right above it. Everybody see what I did? After 6 o'clock, you should be writing 7 a.m. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to stop there. I basically did all of the sheet. Um, I'm not going to do this bottom part. I'll probably talk about that tomorrow. Um, I've gone a little long, and again, sometimes that's going to happen, but I try to keep them short as much as I can. Uh, parents, families, I hope this is helping. Again, um, you should have watched the video first, then I went over the homework. So here's my calendar. Today is uh, Thursday, April 30th, day four. I went over the homework, page 565 and 566. Then I showed you a video today. And after that, I did the first page of lesson 10.2. So that's it for today. Tomorrow, I will do another couple pages for lesson 10.2. Hope you got everything down. Hope you understood it. You should have paused the video when you needed to. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.